Hello YouTube! Welcome back to my channel Uncultured Pearls. My name is Lucy. It's been a couple weeks since I posted. Sorry about that. I got busy. You know, life happens. But we're back into it today. And today I thought I would show you how I wind my yarn. And if you're new to knitting, then just by way of explanation, I will tell you when you buy yarn from a craft store, generally it comes like this, all wrapped up, usually with a center pull, so it's really easy and you just knit straight from it. But if you buy more artisanal type of yarn a lot of the time it will come in a hank like this all twisted up and you can't knit straight from this there's no pull and if you tried to pull a string from this it would get all twisted and become a giant spaghetti bowl of doom so you don't want to do that what you got to do is use either your hands or a yarn winder to wind it up into either a ball or a kink first. And to be real with you, when I first started winding yarn, I actually just used my hands and I, you know, wrapped and wrapped and wrapped until it formed an actual ball. I did that maybe once or twice and then I realized that was taking way too long and it's actually hard on your hands to grip the ball the whole time. So I bought a yarn winder. Um, I just went on Amazon and bought one. I'll leave a link in the description if I can find the one I bought, but the specific winder doesn't even really matter in my opinion. And if you wanna get really professional with it, you can also buy what's called a swift and I'll insert a picture of a swift just in case you're not familiar it's basically a collapsible contraption that you put the hank of yarn on once you untwist it and it spins so that you can very easily feed the yarn from the swift into the yarn winder Apparently it makes it really easy. I say apparently because I do not own a Swift. Perhaps someday I will buy one, but as we have discussed many times on this channel, I am a low budget production. I don't own all the gadgets and gizmos yet, and I'm okay with that. You don't totally need a Swift to wind yarn. So I'm going to show you how I do it. I know I titled the video like how to, but I'm not saying this is the best way. It's just the way that works for me and would probably work for you if you need a place to start. So I actually filmed myself winding some yarn last week. We're gonna cut to that. I'm gonna see if I can do a voiceover. I don't know how to be a YouTuber, but we're gonna give it a shot. And um, so if you appreciate my effort, please hit subscribe. That would help me out and it will help you get notified when I do post new videos. All right, let's get into it. Okay guys, here is my yarn winding setup. As you can see, I have got two folding chairs that I have placed back to back. And I put them kind of under this table just because it's convenient. And here I am attaching my yarn winder to the table. It's pretty easy to do. There's just a little nut that you tighten up and fasten it to the edge of the table so that it doesn't move around while you're trying to wind. 
And going back to the chairs, honestly, these are not the best chairs. I wish I had different chairs that weren't so curved at the back. I think it would work better with kind of a square-shaped back to the chairs. But this is what I have, and it does the job. All right, I have gone to get the one final piece of equipment I need, and that is an IPA. Really your beverage of choice. This is the Lost Rhino Face Plant, which is probably my favorite IPA. And I'm just going to crack that open. I like to wind my yarn before dinner in the kind of cocktail hour time and yeah, it makes it a lot more fun. So now I am unwrapping my first hank that I'm going to be winding. I just pulled the tag off of it and then you just kind of untwist it and now I'm draping it over the back of the chairs. I'm gonna cut the little string that holds it all together. And usually there's two of these strings around the hank at some point. Sometimes there's three, sometimes there's one. This one has two, so I'm just cutting those to separate everything. And then I'm finding the end of the yarn and just starting to unwrap it a little bit and I try to kind of like twist the yarn on the chairs so that the end is coming from the outside of the yarn it makes it a little easier and then I'm just threading it in the end of my yarn winder and through the little metal eye thing that I don't know the words <laughs> for these things but it's kind of a little feeder eye thing. And then here, as you can see, I've just started twisting clockwise on the yarn winder. And I'm just holding the yarn with my other hand above the chairs. So that as, the, as I'm winding, the tension is pulling the yarn off of the hank and it just makes it a little easier if you hold it with your other hand above where the hank is, if this makes any sense. And usually I can get pretty fast with this. Um, you do want to be careful so that you don't accidentally pull the whole hank off the chairs. This is why I think a square shaped back of the chairs would make it easier. But these chairs work okay. You just have to kind of go slow enough that if you do pull the entire hank of yarn off, you can stop and readjust things. And there was going to be an awkward pause right here with no voiceover, so to prevent that, I'm just going to keep talking for like 30 seconds. What am I going to talk about, you may ask? I have no clue. But, you know, we're just going to fill this gap, we're going to enjoy what we're doing, and now I'm getting to the part where I'm going to say something useful. So as I get closer to the end of the hank, I'm being a little more careful with my left hand and I'm kind of doing a spinning motion around the top of the hank so that it doesn't pull the entire hank off the chairs quite as easily. And it can be kind of like patting your head and rubbing your stomach at the same time because I'm doing one circle with one hand on the winder and another circle with the other hand. But it actually gets kind of zen. And yeah, it's, it's not that hard once you've done it a couple times. And here I am just doing the final couple of twists. And then 
I just kind of tuck the end around into some of the other strands on the cake that I've created. And then I take the tag, I wish I had filmed this better, but I fold up the tag that says the color of the yarn and just pop it in the center as I pull the cake off the winder. So that in the future when I want to read what color it is, I can just pull it out of the center of the ball. Quick sip of beer between my hanks. And I'm gonna get straight into the next one. I'm actually gonna speed this one up so that you don't have to watch me forever. It's the exact same thing. We're doing the same color, same process. Let's go. Moving on to a different yarn, this is a DK, I'm going to use this for a shawl I'm making for my mom, but same concept applies, we're just cutting open the tie and threading it into my winder and spinning.
yeah, this is what I do. This, the rest of the footage that I took is pretty much more of the same. I'm just untwisting each hank and feeding it into the winder and having at it. I usually listen to music while I'm doing this, or sometimes I will put on someone else's knitting podcast and kind of listen to that while I do it. It's kind of mindless, but it's pretty fun. I enjoy it. Sometimes my back starts to hurt when I'm doing a lot of skeins at a time, but, you know, it is what it is. Someday I might get a Swift to make things a little easier. Maybe that'll be a Christmas present to myself or something. Um, yeah, see here I've gone for a little break. <laughs> and I'm back. But you probably don't need to see the rest of this footage. You get a gist of what I'm doing. But thanks for coming along for the ride. And we'll just kind of finish this out. And like I said, please do hit subscribe. Uh, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up button. And I would love to hear how you guys wind yarn. Do you have a Swift? Did you always have a Swift? Or did you start out more low budget like me and then at some point you upgraded? Also, if you have any recommendations for the exact Swift that I should get, that would be great. Um, if you could drop me a link or at least describe it, like do you have a wooden one? Are they all wooden? I really have no concept in my mind about them. So any help you can give me would be great. And other than that, uh, thanks for joining me, and I will see you next time. Oh, 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 oh,